Hello and welcome everybody, Adam the Silly Host is here and this is Chicken Police. And we are here to talk to Dr. Bubo. <laughs> Science stuff again. We have some new information. I guess not really. No. Hey, what's up, Doc? Somehow we guessed we'd find you still awake. Stop playing innocent. I've heard that little intermezzo. I have the ears of an owl, you know. We're very <laughs> sorry, Bubo. I'm sure she'll come back. Of course she'll come back. She loves me. I don't know why. And she's afraid that I'll drink myself to death once she's gone for good. She's not wrong about that. Yeah. What do you want? Haven't you caused enough trouble already? We're here for some information. Then we'll be out of your hair. I mean, feathers. Who cares? So what do you want? And be quick about it. Say, Bubo, about Ursula. What about her? She's well, a lovely lady. That's just it. <laughs> what if she's not coming back? I'm a little worried about you, Doc. And you know that's not my style. Well, don't worry, boys. The wind's blowing, the sun's shining. And Ursula always comes back. Exactly. There are things in the universe that are unchangeable. Touching, but you should be prepared for the worst. I thought Molly was coming back too, you know. Oh, yeah. Ouch. I trust Ursula, Sonny. What else can I do? Well, to be honest, that's all you can do. <laughs> True. What do you know about this wristband, Bubo? Zip said they gave these to patients in hospitals. That's why we came back to you. Hmm. Something similar, yes, but not exactly the same. It's different. And? And what? Well, what do you think? Where's this from? How the hoot would I know, Sonny? What am I, some kind of psychic? That I put my hands on it and tell you? Okay, let's try another approach. Do you have any idea why Wessler's men were looking for Zip so hard? I don't. How should I know? Why should I care? He had to hide a body. The body of someone Wessler killed. The wristband is from the corpse. Really? Hmm. That rang a bell, old owl. Well, boys, if I'm right, you're in deep shit. That's more like no it. Shit. Tell us, Bubo. So, Wessler, the wristband, and a corpse, huh? He looks very much like I know the connection. <laughs> or at least I have a hunch. Out with it, owl face. Okay, don't peck me, chickens. Hobart Ibn Wessler has a relative who happens to be a resident at an insane asylum. The band is very likely from there. Wait, a relative? What kind of relative? Yeah. You don't know? I thought you were the detectives. <laughs> anyway, Ibn Wessler has a twin brother, Albert. Albert Wessler? Mm, you put it together very skillfully, Marty. Yes, Albert Wessler. He's a madman kept in solitary confinement. Do you think he's the corpse? But why? No, How the hell no, should no, I no, know no. that? Thanks, Evil Bubo. Wrestler if what you told us is true, then this time we'll owe you one. And his twin brother took his place. never cease. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That makes so much sense now. Like. He was replaced by his twin brother and someone got rid of him and maybe it was by Natasha and someone figured it out so they are blackmailing Natasha for that I don't know I so don't know. Albert Wessler which asylum do you mean Bubo 
It's got some fancy long name. I don't remember, but I have a brochure. Let me find it for you. Thanks, Bubo. Well, here it is. Let there be peace forever. Mental institution for ill and damaged minds. <laughs> Quite a big fool. <laughs> Where can we find it? I've never heard of it. It's a good six-hour drive from Clawville. Maybe more. But you'll find everything in the brochure. You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. Whew. Finally? Now get your chicken scratchers out of here while I'm asking nicely. <laughs> Just one more thing. What's that, Bubo? If that someone was really Albert Wessler, the trouble's bigger than you think. It's always bigger than we think, Bubo. We're used to it. You don't understand. Ibn Wessler never loved and respected anyone in his life like he did his brother Albert. So what? Then the problem's bigger than we thought. A cornered rat bites. Oh, well, thanks for worrying about us, Doc. But there's no way back from here. Too far, too late. We're like hounds, old man. Once we've caught someone's leg, we never let it go. Two. Not while you're alive, eh? Yeah, exactly. Well, goodbye then, fellas. And I wouldn't mind if you never visited me again. The pleasure was all ours, Doc. There was one more question. That rat you mentioned was Zip. Should I be surprised or what? I knew it was him. Yeah. Yeah, we knew you knew. What oh. did that old raccoon do this time? Ibn was blackmailing him with something. That's what we wanted to ask you. Do you know anything about it? I don't care about Wessler's dealings, Sonny. I patch up whoever winds up here, and I don't care if they're cops or gangsters. Yeah, it's the same thing. Or gangster cops. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <brother. laughs> okay. What was that ruckus all about? Ursula's not one to lose her patience quickly. She has literally infinite patience, boys. But somewhere, even infinity has to end. I think infinity's infinite because it has no end. Oh, Martin. Oh, shut up, Martin. I'll zip it. Oh, this day was too much for her. We were supposed to go out for a date or something. Uh -huh. It's New Year's Eve, after all. You know. And that was too much for her. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Somehow tonight, we're shocking everybody we come across. And don't you think that's a sign? Sign of what? That the time for the chicken police is over. <laughs> On the contrary, old man. Everything's the same as it used to be. Great wild ones preserve us. But spit it out. You're right, Doc. Okay, so what did we get? Uh, huh. You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. Oh, I can actually call them 555-966. Interesting. Yeah, I, I really had a feeling that that happened because uh, many people said that uh, even Wessler changed and if he had a, a twin brother that would mean that he was replaced by his twin brother which would mean that he was probably killed. That kind of makes sense but well, who knows, ah Albert. Insane and how was he insane? There's no new places because I mean there are levels of insanity. I guess. Okay, where should we go from here? So that's back home. Or oh, sweltering night, the Zarka new stand. Uh, 
let's take a quick look. Uh, no, nothing. I think here anyway. Please. I'm sorry. Okay. Nothing here. Yeah, I mean, I would love to if some way it would be indicated if there is something new uh, that I could do at a particular place or not. Because this way I'm just wasting my time. We had to gather ourselves, take a deep breath, and think over what we knew so far. What the chickens had I got myself into? <laughs> what did I drag Marty into? Moreover, what had we pulled the whole city into? This was going to be one of those cases that changed things forever. But I wasn't worried about myself. It didn't matter to me. Too many pieces had been plucked off this old rooster. But Marty's different. He's too good of a bird and too good of a cop to end up like me. True. A secret twin brother? Sonny, I'm starting to feel like we're really in a detective novel. A cheap one. Yeah, but... Uh, it was 15 new ones, so... <laughs> what is it, Boss Bird? Uh, I wouldn't say I think it it's was best cheap. If we go our separate ways. What? Are you joking? I know you have a weak sense of humor, but there's a limit to everything. I'm not joking, Marty. Well, I certainly hope you are. Whatever comes next, you don't need to be mixed up in it. You have someone to go home to. Guys, damn it, Sonny. Can you hear yourself? What do you think? I endured all this to give up now? What do you take me for? No, pal. You're not getting rid of me so easily. I just want you to keep your career and your life intact, you moron. Just accept it, shake my hand, and go home. Your wife, Laura, is waiting for you. One more word, Sonny, and I swear I'm gonna bash your beak in. I risked my life more than once tonight. You know why? No. Why? Because we're a team. We have been a team for almost a decade. Now, I don't care what Blood Boil says or whatever's on a goddamn piece of paper. We're the chicken police, Sonny. And we always will be. I'm sorry. You're right. We're gonna go to that insane asylum and wrap this shit up fast and clean. Yeah, just like you said, even if it kills us. Thanks, Marty. Without you... I'd most likely already be sleeping the big sleep. Birds of a feather flock together, right? <laughs> like you say, partner. Uh, let's drop this before you start crying on me, okay? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you almost just did. Ah, cluck off, Marty. That's the spirit, the Sonny I know and hate. Okay. So what should we do? I cannot travel. Five 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 nine six six. Oh, and while we are here, I just want to note down that number in case it disappears, like the clue paper. Well, I actually I think I have screenshots of it, so. Uh, but I don't want to cheat, so anyway, five 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 nine six six. Well, let's try. Okay. Please say the floor inside is covered with conspiracy theory papers and notes written with your own blood. More like dirty clothes and empty bottles, Marty. Sorry. Ah, uh, you're no fun, Sonny. <laughs> well, you'll get old eventually, too. Never. I still have nightmares about the Great Fire. Really? Were you alive then? How old are you exactly? I was three. And maybe it's not even a true memory. Just the collective memory of the city. 
I see the flames. I see the burning buildings. And I hear the screams. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you weren't born in Clawville. Aren't you from Iveria? Exactly, Marty. We were just visiting Clawville when the fire broke out. I'm surprised you ever returned. Well, maybe that's the reason I did return, Marty. It's like when someone falls in love with their captor, you know? Somehow, I feel like this is my place. No matter how much suffering it brings, Clawville's fate is intertwined with mine. Heavy stuff. A closet that's... A stack of paper. Oh, we actually have... What do you think, Marty? Used to ask. What? You care what I think? You must have hit your head pretty bad. Stop fooling around, Marty. I'm serious. So what do you think? About... Well, I think we're in deep shit. But to be honest, Eben Wessler is in deeper shit. Do you think he really murdered his brother? But mm. why? And what does it have to do with Natasha? And the threats? Uh, it doesn't add up yet. Something's missing. Let's visit the institution and try to find out what we can about this Albert Wessler fella. Exactly. If he's the dead body, the new we've got to know what the motive was. If we can't, and if he's still alive, we got to ask him directly. I think Ibn, Albert, and Natasha are the three key players in this case. And the fact that Natasha used to be a... <clears throat> yeah, that too. Listen, Sonny, about... Oh, just forget it, Marty, okay? She's not part of my life anymore. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Forget it. Let's concentrate on the case. And on making it out alive. And helping Natasha, too. Whatever you Natasha say, Bossbird. Is probably so you think Natasha's antagonist. really in danger? It could be. At or the she moment, could even be behind everything. Suspecting that. No, you don't believe that. I'm not sure what I believe, Marty. Like she pretty much Let's took see. over. Things got mixed up at the brothel. Uh... The brothel? used to work there, that's obvious. And Ibn wanted to keep that a secret. Hmm. Who could it belong to? Secret. Zip hid the body, but he kept the wristband. This was my idea, but he declines it. The dead body was almost certainly Albert Wessler, a resident of an insane asylum. But why did he have to die? Case closed. Case is not closed. I still cannot go so... Okay, so the picture is more or less clear. Ibn's got his brother killed because he 
you learned Natasha worked in a brothel. No, well, that could be the case, but I believe the roots go deeper than that. Which we'd only learn if we talk to him. I mean, if the corpse isn't him, because then we'd need a medium. Which would be exciting, but maybe it's enough if we ask the doctor who treated him. That too, yeah. But where's the fun in that? Good point. So where exactly is this place? A few hours drive from here, in the middle of nowhere. It's a creepy old mansion, of course. Do you think it's a good idea to go there? What if it's a trap? I told you, you can still go back. Huh, wouldn't you love that? No such luck, boss. If I get killed or locked up forever in an insane asylum, that's gonna be on you. Thanks, pal. I deserve that. Pretty much. You still trust her? I never trusted her, Marty. I mean, you believe her? I'm sure she was honestly afraid. People don't fake it that easy. But I can understand why she didn't tell us about her, uh, former profession. Or how she knows Molly. Yeah, that too. And the death of Deborah complicated things even more. Hey, Sonny, she... she didn't seduce you, right? I mean, Natasha. Ah, don't be stupid, Monty. <laughs> My old ticker hasn't been beating for a long time. Not that way, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, boss. So what do you think happened to the corpse? Probably been eaten. Horrible to think about, but... even if half of what they say about the hive is true... starvation, riots, arson, predation... You're telling me. Makes my feathers stand on end when I think about what goes on in there. And we pretend we don't know about it. As if Roachtown isn't even part of Clawville. This won't end well. I'm afraid soon, Clawville's gonna burn once again. And because of its own foolishness. Well, that's if another meat war doesn't break out first. Cause then, the whole wilderness will burn. Lovely prospect, eh? Either way, it was a damn clever move for Wessler to hide the body in Roachtown. It's the only place no one will ever find it. Like the belly of a burning ship. Oh, I think that was an intentional red herring. Sounds about right. Who'd have thought? I believed that little rat. I thought he'd changed. Idiot. There's a point when it's too late to change, Marty. His past caught up with him. Whatever he did since then doesn't matter. Not much. Exactly. And that's the case with us, too. That's why I won't back down. Even though a voice in my head is screaming right now, leave it all to hell and have another drink. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should. Great meat war. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Twenty seven species were. I still can go away from here, so I guess I still have to talk to Okay, me. so the picture is more or less clear. Ibn's got his brother. No, that could be the case. Which we don't. No. Which would be uh, that too? Yeah. No, he already said that. So books I've never. Let's try to call again. Maybe that can help. I'd like to uh, inquire about a patient who I believe is being uh, uh, treated at your institution. Uh, his name is Albert Wessler. I'm sorry, 
sorry, sir, but I can't give out that information if you don't have the password given to relatives. Do you have one? Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm not a relative. I'm calling from the Clawville Police Department. Oh, I see. In that case, officer, I'd advise you to visit our institution personally. Our director and I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, miss. I guess I'll do that. We'll welcome you with open arms, sir. Have yourself a beautiful starlit night. This lady sounds oh, uh, weird. Thanks. Uh, goodbye. See you soon. So, we have to go there. Ah, the thought gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps aren't good enough for you? <laughs> ha ha ha. And I still can go. So, I get the couch? It'd be better if I called Lewis. He'll open up a room for you to sleep in. Whew, great idea. Uh, what was Luis's number? Uh... Wait, I have the book for that. People. Hey, Lewis, it's, uh, it's me again. <laughs> oh, hello, Sonny. What's up? Were you sleeping, pal? Me? Oh, I wasn't. Anyway, I'm always at your service. Oh, Would you open up a room for Marty? Naturally, Sonny. Thanks, Lewis. I'm not even gonna say it. I will. You won't need one. Again. <laughs> yeah. Cannot go anywhere else, just to insane on this island. Uh. Sorry for the mess, Marty. I uh, rarely have visitors. Don't worry about it, Sonny. I didn't expect anything else. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so I think this is all, so let's just go there, I guess. Uh, let's see what waits us over there. I slept like I used to sleep years ago, like a miner or a soldier, empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly, but she wasn't real. Just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried. But all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing. But her eyes were cold. Then she said something. Painted red. Painted red. Painted red. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Obviously. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... <laughs> Ooh, just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. Oh my. This place looks awful. 
Stairs. Miranda. Oh, <laughs> poor giraffe lady. Where is her head? On the second floor? <laughs> anyway, the corridor. We should go to reception first. Okay, okay, resident. Oh. Yeah, that looks really nice, but it's like a propaganda poster. This picture, it's very Colorful. special. Yeah, it's it, it actually has color. This pick it's special. Yeah, I guess. I mean, this is the only piece of color aside from Natasha's eyes, I guess. I think. So what's that? Uh, dog, bear, cat, goose. Anyway, let's move on. Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Ooh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. Yeah, that's no. like the new well, guy. No, it can't be. Um, Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, no, no. Uh, for a moment, I, I, I thought that it was the new stand's guy's uh, relative. But now, now that I took a closer look, his face is different, I guess. Anyway, let's see. Of all the great wild ones! <laughs> Greetings, miss. Is it really you? Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic! Oh my goodness! Uh, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Uh, Indeed. You can't I imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. Issues. We really... Oh god, oh god, oh god. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some... air. So, dear detectives... Is Santino she a patient? Martin, <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. <laughs> I still have one person left. <laughs> all your questions. You know. Say, miss, uh, what can you much. tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and person. seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff, and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. <clears throat> Quite a guy. He certainly is. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. 
He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho what? Unraveling the mind. <laughs> it's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, oh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. Mm. I thought so. Suspicious. Uh, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Yeah, we already knew that. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Oh, we won't. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. We need to let... Huh. It doesn't matter how big a star you once were. Ending up lonely and crazy in a rotting insane asylum in the middle of nowhere is like the universe restoring its balance. That was very uh, poetic of you, Marty. Almost deep. Careful you don't drown. Cluck you. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but... Do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared. And we're really, really worried. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great wild ones protect him. Mm-hmm. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all its... Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. But they feel exactly the same about us. Exactly. <laughs> Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know... Snakes have a different sense of smell, and birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? So he was the last one. People. Uh, and of course, we haven't met uh, Albert for real, but I, I, I really have a feeling that uh, the guy that we met as Eben is actually Albert, and Eben is already dead. But who knows, maybe I am wrong. To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say, I was expecting it. What an introduction. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Seth. 
you as Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. <laughs> we have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two, Detective. We know you know. It's about Albert Wessler. Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death? Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, it's not nice, so the body. Annoying. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. That's interesting. <coughs> Oh, I can actually question him. What, what kind of a place is this exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. How long have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the Crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. Oh, I see. What a coincidence. <laughs> 
Okay. Hmm, Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery. But I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. Mysterious. So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. What? Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve, maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Just it was sleeting ago. that day, wind was banging in incessantly on the windows. The power was going out for short periods of time. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name. I knew who they were. Or at least I knew one of them, Hobart Wessler. He was famous. Gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. And Albert? Albert? He was new to me, an invisible gray ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. That's how it usually is. That's sad. What was your first impression of him? He was silent, but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes were constantly moving, never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone. Locked up in silence and then darkness. How did he escape? Didn't you think Allegedly. of that as unusual? Of course I did. But who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. How did Albert relate to you? Albert was immensely sophisticated and polite. So much so that his true emotions and thoughts could not be deciphered. And that's why you thought of him as an exciting case. That's right, Mr. Featherland. I see you're starting to get to know me in some way. <laughs> I'm just doing my job, Doctor. You and me both. Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. Mm -hmm. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first time. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time, when he failed to come back. 
Quetzal's not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. That was unusual for him. I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting for his brother. Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, uh -huh. I've seen it. That is how uh, Natasha and Albert met. Uh -huh. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself. And on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely, piece by piece. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. So, Albert's tongue was torn out, or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely so you're saying albert was brought back horribly mutilated yes and they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened mm -hmm. they simply told me it was some kind of accident dr quetzal is cold and professional but he's also very confused maybe it's cruel but I must exploit his vulnerability <laughs> if I want to learn everything about Albert. Focus, confused. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I know who were the two guys who brought Albert back, but I am also tr has, has a feeling that it wasn't Albert who came back, but it was maybe even... I mean, maybe I am misunderstanding the whole story and I am ch just chasing ghosts, but uh, I have a feeling that on that last time he came back, that was uh, even. Uh, 
and his tongue was cut out so he couldn't say a thing because Albert took uh, over wow who knows uh. the two fellows who brought Albert back uh, could you describe them I didn't want this those two fellows as you put it were two remarkably huge rude men a ram and a bobcat perhaps no, one of them was a tiger, if I remember correctly. Hmm. He had a rather fresh bump under his left eye, and the other one was a penguin. But I've never seen a penguin that big in my entire life. Did they tell you anything besides it was an accident? They didn't say anything, but gave an obvious signal that I had to keep quiet about what happened. I see. Concentrate, Doctor. What do you think happened to Albert? I'm sure it was Hobart. He ordered his men to mutilate poor Albert. But why would he do that? Maybe Albert saw something he could accidentally reveal. To whom? The four walls? A couple of crazies? You? To anyone, Mr. Featherlad. I don't think it's that simple, Doctor. But thank you for your honest opinion. You're welcome, Detective. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was uh, in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. He was trying to signal that he was evil and not broken Albert. Too. So he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it, but I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply... Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff. Even the patients. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. But please, I now must attend to my work. We understand, Doctor. Thank you. left to see hmm yeah there is some storylines but not much I cannot go your office is, uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That well, makes sense. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. But yes, it's like all the others, except there are even bigger ones than this. 
Is this cell like... I would... Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. <laughs> so escaping is impossible. If I'd want to escape, I have the privilege of using the door. <laughs> So, is if I'd want... Is this cell like... I would rock... An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting. You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. Oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. Marty, clock up. Are you very busy? I am. A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. How long was Albert for quite? Was he brought? You know, because uh, I couldn't. As far as indeed. That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it. Not for a second. After Albert came back to us, horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out, and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. Because it wasn't we Albert. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible. Yeah. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Well, that's, uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. It seems that being a Wessler gets you privileges. And a healthy dose of danger. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... paint? Ink? Plaster? Some kind of oil? Aging paper? Slight smell of rat and great expectations. What the dickens? <laughs> Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. Colors again. Eyes. I can understand that I that I if it was Eben who was brought back mutilated, I can understand why his tongue was cut out, but, but why the eye? Why the eye? Why the eye? Different eye color, maybe? No way! Is this some kind of puzzle? I don't think so. But we could still find something important here. A pattern, a sign, anything. I don't know, can it be Debbie, the doe who, who was killed? Maybe? That's... Cat, hat... 
Wow. It's like a bat. I... Police. Numbers. Flowers. Stars. Oh. You know, I don't think he had it so bad in here. You mean, apart from being separated from everyone you love in an ancient mansion filled with madmen? Eh, you're right. As always. Hmm. The style. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for far too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. It is. A little. No, oh, the style is like very similar to the uh, that the paintings that were in the brothel. So this is an original Albert Wessler. I think so. It's pretty good, I must say. And I saw something very similar in Natasha's room. You kept me out of it. Sorry, little boy. Maybe next time. <laughs> Whew, it's hot in here. Okay, Marty, that's enough. <laughs> Okay. Well, I guess the bed has to find a new owner soon. Are you really so sure he's not alive anymore? No, I never said that. Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. And not the Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <clears throat> Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird. Look at that. A letter. Scribbles. Newspaper articles. Study papers. Poems. Perfect chaos. Mm -hmm. Just like the troubled mind of a troubled fella. Yeah, but there's still a kind of order in it. It's just too intricate for you to comprehend. <laughs> if you say so, boss. Isn't this familiar, Sonny? Just like your office and your desk. Marty. Okay, okay, shut Let's see, what do we have here? Identical twins. And looking at it... Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. What about the letter? was madly in love with Natasha and would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. Albert was... What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. Exactly. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden if i'm right this will flip the whole case upside down exactly. i just have to think things through before i come to any hasty conclusions marty oh you're killing me so what now where to back to clawville where we can finally put all the pieces together <sighs> you're driving me crazy but all right let's go home Oh, so I couldn't mess with the creepy mu mu mural. Can't even say it out loud. Yeah. 
There's still one place left, some new information maybe. No. No. Oh. What can you tell us about the woman <coughs> in the photo we saw in Albert's room? Do you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko? Well, yes. I don't know much about her, but everyone heard her name and her voice around here. Did she ever visit this place? Never. But if you ask me, Natasha probably didn't even know Albert was a resident of our institution. And Albert, did he mention her often? Constantly. It was obvious he had an affection for Miss Katsenko, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have thought for a moment he could escape. Because I wouldn't jump ahead, Doctor. Something else could be behind Albert's disappearance. Do you think so? All the signs clearly indicate this. Maybe they do, Doctor, but in my line of work, logic's not always the best advisor. In 99% of cases, <laughs> if you say so. I can go back to the hotel, but nowhere else, so can I? So, detectives. Have you found what you were looking for? I'm afraid we have, Doctor. And more. I wouldn't dare to say I'm happy to hear it, but I'm glad to be of service to you. Well, thanks, Doc. I hope I don't offend you by saying, I hope we're not going to meet any time soon. And <laughs> not on account of either of our jobs. Exactly. Okay. I don't think we can do anything else here, so let's get back home. Oh, I don't believe this. Those two again? Take them out. My car won't last much longer. Oh. Don't worry, Sonny. I was born to do this. Exactly. Concentrate, Marty, for the God's sake. Can you drive like you're not a fucking lunatic? Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow. Don't shoot them, Berman. Shoot the... <laughs> okay. No, I don't want a hint. I mean, this is a little crazy. I mean, why can't I just kill them? But, eh, whatever. Whatever. I mean, that's okay. I will shoot the car. Concentrate, Marty, for the God's sake. Can you drive like you're not a fucking lunatic? Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow. Are you blind or what? Where did you learn to shoot? Whew. Well, that was close. A little too close for my taste. And it only strengthens my belief. Wessler is desperate. He knows if we survive, he's done for. Well, come on, what did you work out? Will you tell me already? Sure. Let's put the picture together, piece by piece. Let's start from the beginning. So, we got a case. So, before we do that, that will happen in the next episode because we are well beyond our one hour limit. So, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Goodbye.